John's 77 day video challenge. Today is day number eight. This is September the 7th, Wednesday. Welcome to Wednesday, by the way, everybody. Wednesday is a special day for me because I, uh, I'm, I grew up in a home where Wednesday was always an important part. It was obviously the middle of the week, but more importantly, on Wednesday evenings, we would have prayer meeting at church. And the prayer meeting thing was a big deal because as I was growing up, there were activities as a child, then there were the activities as a preteen, and then, of course, there were the teen experiences, and then the experiences as an adult. And I'm glad that I'm still part of a church fellowship, the Lake Gibson Church of the Nazarene here in Lakeland, Florida, where we actually do have a Wednesday night gathering, and that gathering is a number of things, small groups, Bible studies, and also uh, the resumption of an actual time of significant focused prayer. Now, my video challenge today is not to talk about prayer, but I think it's important for you to understand this is a part of the makeup, this is a part of who I am, this is how I came to be who I am, I'm not a perfect person in any way, form, shape, or fashion. I'm as flawed as the next one is concerned. I've made bad choices. I've made good choices. And in all cases, these things have been part of the process of living, and I think they have all been a part of a process of bringing me along to where I am today at this stage of my life. So I'm thankful for these things. But I'm thankful, especially this morning, to be able to be talking to you. And if you notice, I'm talking to you on my phone rather than on my laptop, which is sitting right here. I've got a busy week. I'm making preparations. I'm not going to stop doing these unless some extenuating circumstance happens to step in. And I've always said, by the grace of God, I'm going to continue to do my video challenge for you and to bring you into my home and I into your home in the palm of your hand or on your laptop whatever it happens to be, even your tablet, and I'm going to talk with you in this video challenge about something that's very special to me, but I want it to be special to you. And I want to thank those of you who perhaps will be watching this this morning, and those of you that will chance watch it later. But either way, I'm here, I'm streaming live on Facebook, and I'm revisiting the story the journey of resolve, my power word for living, and I today I wanted to take you back to these first three letters that we've talked about. During the course of these previous seven days, we have talked about the letter R for resilience, the letter E for engagement, and then yesterday I spoke about the letter S and I added an additional S by calling it selfless service, but the letter S ultimately initially at the beginning was for the word service, but I wanted to add the component of selflessness to it because service must be something that we do as a giving away of ourselves without the thought of anything coming back to us that would profit us, and yet in the act of selfless service, there is a reward. And that reward comes in many, many ways, forms, shapes, and fashions. I think you know that at this stage of my life, I'm learning to try to live as much as I can in the moment. Resilience, engagement, and service require a steadfast focus on now. Before I logged in to my Facebook account here on the telephone and began streaming to you live here on Facebook, I had a quiet time. I didn't set a stopwatch and follow the stopwatch until the time was met. I just committed to 17 minutes, <clears throat> another Darren LaCroix idea. 17 minutes of uncluttered thinking. Now, let's pause for a moment. Let's talk about uncluttered thinking. 
I tell people when they ask me what it is that I do, and since I am a keynote speaker, a podcaster, but I'm also an emerging individual personal coach in terms of communication and life change, as well as a group and a team coach, and involved in things where I try to help people achieve their maximum, their very, very best potential, I realize that in this process of living, we, we often are so busy. Now think about it, extraordinarily busy, there's a schedule of things to do, there are more things that are popping into the schedule, <clears throat> there are things getting done, things getting partially done, things starting to get done, and then suddenly some circumstance <clears throat> pops into the picture and it has to be changed, modified, altered, or set aside and indicated as this is not going to be a part of the plan because it just doesn't fit the direction. I always say have an end in mind when you get up every day, know your plan, work your plan, let your plan be the thing that you want to above all else achieve. But within that plan, please allow yourself the opportunity not to be so self-absorbed that you miss the opportunities that are so vital for you to know about in the course of the day because the only thing you have is today and right now this particular moment that you and I are in together for those that are watching is specifically your moment that you're allowed to have you're alive now by the grace of God in my opinion and by the grace of God you need to begin to realize that everything that is going to take place and could take place is a part of a plan to take you to a better place if you are in the right frame of mind, have the right heart, mind, soul, body, and spirit. Then getting back to the principal thing here, being busy, 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 busy people, we are immediately distracted with the concerns. As soon as we get out of bed, we, we're wondering, okay, how am I going to get this done? I need to do this, 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 and this. And all I'm saying is that it's good to have things to do, but sometimes you got to stop. And what Darren was trying to explain to us and say to us in the most effective way possible is 17 minutes. 17 minutes, stop. 17 minutes, don't think about anything. In other words, stop thinking about the cares, the problems, the worries, the good things, the exciting things, even the big plans that you've got for the day. 17 minutes of quiet time. 17 minutes of focus. Not selfish focus, but selfish enough that you are looking in and saying to yourself, Find that quiet place, that place of peace, that spot where you are in your element. For me, this morning, uh, there's a window. <laughs> it's beside the couch there in the front part of the house. I have a very small house. It's uh, just under a thousand square foot. So here I am. I get my cup of coffee. Now this morning I didn't brew a pot. Instead, I just turned on my Keurig and I brewed myself a quick cup of coffee. I walked over to that spot on the couch, I set my cup of coffee down, I pulled the curtains back so I could look out the window. Nothing unusual about what's in the window. I live in a neighborhood, so there are houses, there's a street, there's activities taking place. Hi Alice, oh the memories I have with you going all the way back to Chattanooga Bible School. Just wanted to share that with you, that's one of the most amazing things you were and still are a very special part of my life and I've never forgotten you. Thank you for joining me this morning. I sat down by the window and I decided to devote myself to, as I'm trying to do every morning, 17 minutes of just drinking my coffee, relaxing and enjoying what is in the moment. Not letting my mind be cluttered with what's on my schedule for today. And trust me when I tell you, I've got quite the schedule today. I'm making preparations to travel to North Georgia to spend some time with my sister and with my two nieces, Sarah and Christy. And in particular with Christy and with Terry, my sister, their birthdays are coming up. Christy's birthday is this coming Friday, September the 9th. And then the following Tuesday on September the 13th is my sister Terry's birthday and also my Aunt Jackie's birthday. Yes, my Aunt Jackie is still very much with us, and I believe if I got my math correct and she sees the light of day of next Tuesday, she will be 92. And 
she's one of the few remaining relatives that I have live on my father's side of the family from that trio of siblings that were born to my grandparents. So here I am now, knowing that there's activities coming up, but I'm just thinking about today is today. It's Wednesday. The passage of Scripture runs through my mind. This is the day that the Lord has made. Am I going to take the time to rejoice and be thankful and glad for it? Yes. Now, while I was sitting there, I text messaged a friend of mine, sending him greetings and telling him how much I appreciated them. And I called another friend and got their voicemail. It was my intention to tell them thanks and also to tell them that I was looking forward to seeing them tonight at church because tonight we will be having our prayer time. And this is something that I look forward to, and it starts at 6.30. But again, the principal focus was just forget about what you've got to do today and for the next few minutes, relax, clear your mind, enjoy the moment, drink your coffee. So while I'm sitting there drinking my coffee, those of you that know me know that all my life I've been a cat lover. And I happen to have been fortunate to have married a cat lover. And she and I both have always had cats in our lives and we just understand them, we relate to them, we know that they are capricious and crazy and nuts sometimes, but they're also amazing companions. They are my friends. One morning here I'll probably introduce you to them and just kind of go around with the camera and let you meet this brigade as I call it. Some people say, why do you have so many cats? Actually, I've had far more than I have now, but these cats have been my mental health counselors during my grieving period that started back on June the 2nd of 2019 when Donna died. They are consistent, they are faithful, they are devoted. No, they're not like dogs, and dogs are fabulous animals too, and I do love dogs. But my wife and I were both working all of our lives, so we never had a dog. And the reason why is because it wasn't fair to the dog. And dogs deserve that time and attention. They need to be played with and they need to go for walks and they need to have you just sit down with them and relish them and them you. Dogs are animals that are incredibly devoted and loyal and they adore you. Cats love you in their own way, but cats are a very different creature and it's actually something that I admire immensely because they are survivors, but they're also incredibly companion-based whenever they need it. And so here I am sitting, drinking my coffee, sitting by the window, having my 17 minutes of quiet time, clearing my head, and one of those cats, a black cat that we rescued a few years back, who had, you know, would have died otherwise, climbs up and rests in my lap and just lays there. And all I have to do is just put my hand on him and just softly stroke his fur and his head and he very quietly lays there, says nothing, his eyes are closed, and you can feel his body vibrating because he's purring. That's an amazing feeling for a human being because it does release endorphins. The warm skin, the soft fur, the vibrations, and just the fact that the cat is there and is enjoying the experience, and you're enjoying the experience with him or her. So I'm drinking my coffee, and I'm letting my head clear. And when my 17 minutes is up, then I pull myself up. up. Hey, Lanny, another great memory from my past. And what's even more neat about it is I remember going to college with Lanny at Trevecca, but I remember growing up with Lanny when his father, J.D. Whitener, one of the finest pastors I knew, uh, was my pastor at Rossville First Church of the Nazarene, so Lanny... <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you both, Alice and Lanny, for joining me this morning. This is this is precious. I appreciate it. Such incredible memories of my life when I was young. And now none of us are young anymore. It's okay, people. Have a sip of coffee or whatever it is, a beverage you're having this morning, and just know that part of my 77-day challenge isn't just to talk about the things that have shaped and molded my life as I am at this stage, but it's also to say hi to friends and thank them for caring enough to pause in their busy schedule and listen to this guy who always was known 
as a motor mouth. I talked constantly. I still talk, although you might be surprised to know that I can be extraordinarily quiet, but I have to because I'm learning as I shared when we were talking about the importance of selfless service to focus two eyes and two ears on people. And since you only have one mouth, keep your mouth shut and no more than 20% of the time even open it. <laughs> Getting back to the thing about the quiet time is that once that's done, then I can come in here and I can share with you because I wanted to tell you that the 17 minutes that Darren challenged me with does require an individual to do the things that are contained in the power word resolve. You must have a resilience. This resilience is a steadfast commitment to developing good habits. And a good habit is to take time for yourself. You've got to bring yourself into the situation where you are shoveling aside, and you're right, I remember intramural basketball games, Lanny. I was, uh, what was I? I think I was in the um, Alpha Society. I believe I was in the Alpha Society. But we played basketball. That was always had Alpha, Beta, Delta, and Gamma. The Getting back to this, the resilience thing is you you have to commit and you have to be resilient to do it. You've got to be steadfast to do it. So get in there and do it every day. And what happens is as you continually do it day in and day out, it becomes habitual. It becomes something that almost is essential. You have to have it. You have to do it. You want to do it. It means the world for you to do it. Then there is this engage. You have to engage the day. You have to engage the circumstances that come your way. You have to confront them. You have to also engage the things that you're able to look down the road and spot and say to yourself, okay, I need to either be prepared to engage it or prepared to avoid it. And then, of course, in the service aspect of it, if you're going through the day just seeing what's in it for you, I really wish you would stop and begin to, to apply the thought process that what's in it for me is not how it ought to be, but rather what's in it for me is everything about what I can do for others. And even if it's just going through the routines of running errands, can I bring an attitude of warmth, a smile, a positivity? If I make eye contact with someone, do I give them a smile with my eyes or with my face? Do I say to them, hi, hope you're having a good day, or greetings, or anything like that, and going through the line at the checkout, having a conversation with the cashier, with the person bagging the groceries, or the person putting your merchandise into the bag, or the person at the counter who helped you. Did you go out of your way? And actually, going out of your way is a dumb thing to say. It's not going out of my way. It it was... Yeah, Lanny, I did. I remember basketball, a, T, a TNC basketball, and we did do basketball games together. As a matter of fact, you might find this interesting. My freshman year at Trevecca back in 69, when I was on WNAZ doing Trevecca basketball, Steve Mays was a program director at the station, and Steve did the color. I did the play-by-play. -play. Steve Mays is alive and well and is a member of the Lake Gibson Church of the Nazarene here in Lakeland, and he and I are close friends and sat together on Sunday mornings in church, and he is a tremendous inspiration to me, and he is every bit one of the greatest people that I know and another one of those reconnections that have occurred through my journey at Trebekah Nazarene College, a.k.a. now Trevecca Nazarene University. Thanks for reminding me about that, Lanny. By the way, if there was anything that I would do that would get me to return to radio, it would be doing play-by-play -play because I love play-by-play, -play, and that really fits the moniker of me having a motor mouth. Literally, you turn the switch on and blah, 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 it just starts flying. But I loved it because I always enjoyed listening to play-by-play -play on the radio. And yes, I'm still a University of Tennessee fan, and I remember John Ward, and John Ward was a great influence upon me. The, the key thing I want to point out is this. Your, your general attitude about engaging life every day is about making connection with people. So the selfless service attitude is while you're out there, do everything you can to cast something positive into the lives of other people. A friend of mine once told me, give flowers to the living and not just to the dead. Flowers are a great way of, of letting people know how much you care about them 
but flowers are not just the blooms. Flowers sometimes are the words you say, the smiles you cast, the actions you do, the places where you show up and make your presence known because you come not for yourself but because you were thinking of them. The thoughtful measures. In the life of resolve, we have to resolve with a definite plan of action, a definite firm plan of action to make sure that in everything that we do is we are working and striving to achieve our personal and professional goals that we remember that along this journey it's better to go with a band of friends is a journey that's done with family it's a journey that's done with extended family it's a journey that is done with community and there are like-minded people out there that will be glad to be a part of your life because you cared enough to be a part of theirs but also remember this even the most detached, distracted, and in some cases, angry people who just simply don't want to be caught up in anyone else's life because their life is too much of a hassle for themselves and time is money for them and there's work to be done and they don't have time to waste with cordialities. That doesn't mean you don't continue to be consistent in your resolve to be the best version of you that you can possibly be. This is what I strive for. I didn't always live my life this way. I'm thankful for what has happened to me. I'm thankful for what's happening to me right now. I'm thankful for that cup of coffee over there that I'm enjoying which I started my day with as I had my quiet time and then I made myself another cup so that I could come here and talk with you and as I like to do I always toast you and take a drink reminding myself that I need to warm it up because motor mouth here talks so long that the coffee gets tepid my power word for living resolve R E S O L V E. On this eighth day of the 77 day video challenge, I have shared with you and enjoyed talking with you and streaming online to you about how the word resolve, since my wife, my late wife Donna, and I adopted that word towards the end of 2017 how that word has had an incredible impact upon us. There are many, many other words and things that have had an impact upon me as well. I am blessed beyond all measure in life and have so much to be thankful and grateful for. I'm grateful for the people whose names appear on the screen in the comments that I see. I'm grateful for the people that will watch this video later and share with me. Enjoy your conference call, Lanny. Thanks for chiming in today, and be blessed, brother. You're a great man, and God bless your family. But to all of you, including my son who is watching right now as he gets his morning off to a start, remember something. We all have things that we have to do. So many responsibilities. We have obligations, and we will be confronted with surprises and challenges and difficulties as well. But I will assure you of one thing, there will also be a bevy of wonderful things that can happen. But to enjoy and experience those wonderful things, you have to intentionally notice. When the journey of I never noticed, which is my principal brand moniker, emerged in 2011 after Mother's Alzheimer's explosion, it was then that with my wife and I, and others in our family who loved my mother dearly, we started committing ourselves to paying more attention to the events that were taking place, slowing down and noticing more about what was happening in each and every day, and cherishing those moments for the benefits of joy that they brought, the beauty they brought, the pleasure they brought, the teaching they brought, but also the warning signs that they brought. For everything that happens in life can be something that you can apply that will help you and you can't notice everything 
but you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So since you are, even though you may not cognitively notice everything about what's going on, the brain misses nothing. Our senses are at work 365 days per year, around the clock, 24-7, even when we're sleeping, the senses are busily working, taking in data and information and managing the body. The brain is an incredible thing. And in so doing it, understand that there are things that we can and should allow ourselves the opportunity to pause and take notice of and enjoy. And sometimes it's as simple as saying, pause, take 17 minutes, relax beside the window, drink your cup of coffee, clear your head, have a conversation with your Lord and Savior if you are a follower of Jesus Christ like I am. But most importantly, be surprised at the wonderful things that take place when a cat, for example, climbs up into your lap and quietly lays there, purring, while you pet its head, drinking a good cup of coffee, making a phone call to someone out of thoughtfulness, texting a friend out of thoughtfulness. Allow yourself the opportunity to experience a quiet time. Don't be in such a rush that you can't allow yourself the time for an emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual cleansing. Resolve, resolve, resolve. A definite, firm plan of action. It's a choice. When I join you tomorrow for day number nine, this being day number eight, of my 77 day challenge I'm going to talk about the letter O that center anchor letter in resolve and it's a big deal for me because that letter more than any other letter and that particular word that I assign to that letter represent the one place where I've had the greatest challenges and often experienced the greatest failures in my life but at the same time, it gives me the greatest means of purpose, and it's ideal that the center letter of resolve happens to be that O, because everything hangs on that letter. And you'll understand why when we get together at this time, somewhere around this time tomorrow morning. Be blessed, everybody. Thank you, Alice, for being here this morning. I hope you have and experience an incredible day. Lanny has already departed. He's going to a conference call. My son is getting ready to do the work that he does extraordinarily well as a client services specialist for the company that he does, but he's also the father of two of the most incredible granddaughters that a grandfather could ever have and married to a young lady who may be my daughter-in-law, but, but she is in every way, form, shape, and fashion a daughter to me, and I love her dearly. To all of you, and to those of you that will watch this video later today as you are going through your Facebook feed and looking at your notifications, have a great day. It's Wednesday. It's September the 7th, and already we are one-fourth of the way through the month of September in the final four of the year 2022. And if I see you tomorrow... I thank God for that. But until then, by the grace of God, I look forward to seeing you. So for now, remember, slow down. Take your 17 minutes. Experience a quiet time. Reflect and pull as much beauty out of the beginning of the day as possible. Number two, resolve to do everything you can to make your day the best day possible and begin by first and foremost understanding that that resolve should be to make everyone else you meet enjoy an equally successful and happy day. Be ready, willing, and able to do for others and you will get a blessing that you did not imagine. So until I see you tomorrow, enjoy a great day. Thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure being with you today. May it be the most successful day you've ever had. And by the grace of God, until tomorrow, this is John Morrow saying so long. Thank you for joining me. 
as we continue on my 77-day video challenge. Bye-bye for now.